How's it going Eliminators? Today we're going to be looking at a seized up auger on a snowblower, so let's get right into it. Well, I wasn't planning on doing a video on this. What I thought was just going to be a bad auger gear because the auger was seized and the pulley didn't turn at the end there. Turned out to be a bigger job than I thought. So I've loosened off the sides, similar to my how to fix a snowblower auger worm gear. You can check that out in the top right of your screen. But this is what happens when you run over a newspaper on your driveway. So our customer had newspaper delivered to his house and the, you know, the kid just rides by and throws it on the driveway. Well, we got a bunch of snow that night and he had about two, three foot drifts of snow in his driveway and he couldn't see the newspaper. Now, normally what happens is if something gets jammed in here, your shear pins shear and normally uh, that prevents any failure of uh, internal parts such as your auger gearbox worm gear in here uh, or damage to something else. Well, what's happened is that newspaper, because this snowblower is a little bit older, it has a much wider gap and that newspaper went past the first stage directly into the second stage, which isn't really meant to shear. Normally, uh, this is what shears up here. And then uh, these here don't spin because, you know, the pins have sheared. And if there's something in here blocking it from turning, uh, then there's no damage done. So what happened in that video that I just linked, uh, the other one, uh, same thing basically happened where uh, he hit a piece of ice. The shear pins didn't shear because he had the incorrect ones. And the momentum of everything transferred into the uh, ring gear in the gearbox and it just completely destroyed the soft brass gear. You guys can check that video out. It's essentially the same thing that I've done to this in terms of taking everything apart. So I've loosened the bolts on both sides here. Uh, on this one, there's a little hanger. You guys can see right there. I've loosened that off. And then I've come to the back here and I've loosened off our bearing. I'll get a better shot of that in a minute. So you guys can see here that when I took the bearing off, the auger just kind of kicked over and you can see that that's not centered up at all. So what's actually happened, I believe, is uh, the newspaper went past the first stage and then it got into the second stage there. And then from there, what I'm thinking is it bent one of the impellers in the second stage. So one of the blades in there is bent and it just kind of shifted the whole unit sideways. So now we have an issue where even though everything is loosened off on this, we can't get it out because the second stage impeller is now kind of uh, forced itself into that second stage auger hosing. So we're gonna have to go in there and forcefully remove it uh, not the greatest news because we thought it was just going to be a, you know, a gearbox gear that was uh, stripped down, but it turned out that uh, this is a much bigger job. And in here, before I took some pictures, uh, once I pulled that bearing off, you could see there was uh, chunks of newspaper all in here, uh, right at all the way to the back of the bearing. You guys can kind of see it there too. That's all newspaper. And uh, there's some newspaper there. Just unbelievable what a little bit of paper can do. But that's the problem when the paper is rolled up in a plastic bag and left to sit under a two or three foot snow drift. Basically, it's frozen and it turns into a brick. Now to get access at that bearing, we had to remove the pulley. Uh, that was slightly seized, so we let it sit overnight with some uh, penetrating oil. I'll have to get that cleaned up. There's a keyway in there as well. That was stuck in there, so I had to take a cold chisel to that and tap that out so you guys can see couple gnarl marks on there, but uh, otherwise not that bad. The pulley came off. The bearing, thankfully, wasn't damaged. That was also a little seized on there, but uh, with a little bit of penetrating oil, it came off, and this one still spins freely. There's a little bit of grinding when we turn it, so we might replace that, but uh, you know that's not nearly his biggest issue. So I will update you guys further once I get the innards of this auger out of the auger hosing. We're going to have quite a job here to do to get that out because, like I said, everything's just bent up and out of place. And right now it's kind of on, a, on an angle, so we're going to have to forcefully remove it. Hopefully there's you know no damage to the actual drive shaft itself. We're hoping that that isn't warped because then we got to replace the whole inside of the auger. And for uh, craftsmen such as this, it's uh, pretty old. This is an 80s model, 1980s. So getting parts for this uh, isn't going to be cheap and they're going to be hard to find. So essentially what happens is we have to try to salvage what we can from this. But I'll bring you back once I know more. So we've got it to the point now where we're starting to pull out more and more of the 
newspaper that got jammed in there. And this stuff, guys, it's basically like a chunk of concrete. Like it's hard. And this stuff got right into the second stage. I'll show you a picture of it. And this basically wedged in there. And that's what caused our whole second stage to be kind of warped inside of the auger housing. So that's just what we've pulled out so far. That's a you know, pretty big pile right there. We're still running into a couple issues where things are binding up. So we're just trying to get the rest of it out that we can. But you guys might be able to see right back in that corner, right back in there, if you guys can see that. That's where the biggest piece of newspaper was back there. So again, that's one of the things that you wanna watch out for when you're snow blowing. You know, doing any kind of snow removal with uh, any kind of piece of equipment that has moving parts. You always wanna be careful that there's no foreign objects or, you know, kids' toys, newspapers, anything that could be left around the yard. So for doing uh, snow removal with a snow blower, let's say on your driveway, you wanna make sure, you know, here in Canada, you could have kids leaving hockey sticks or hockey pucks or tennis balls, just like this case here, newspaper left out on the driveway. You don't see it because there's two or three feet of snow on top of it. As far as cutting grass with a riding lawnmower, you could have something where it's like, you know, kids toys or maybe your dog's toy laying on the grass and you drive by and cut it in some long grass, you might not see it. So again, there's always these things to think about. Again, a little bit more to go and we should get this auger out of there. Now, the reason that we have to take the auger from the auger housing out, even though we've got all of our newspaper, you know, kind of pulled out of there, is because when we went to remove our bearing here at the end, one of the bolts that goes through, you have three here, uh, one of them stripped, so we have to replace that bolt. And on the second stage here, there's a big circular plate that goes in there. That's what your fins are welded to. You guys can probably see it down in there. So that little lip that's running right around there, that's not the auger housing, that's your second stage. So to get a bolt through there, you have to pull this whole auger assembly and the shaft, everything out of the auger housing. And then once we get that out, then we can go ahead and push the bolt through from the backside and then put a new one in, weld it in place, check the welds on the other ones. Cause again, if you ever have to replace an auger bearing on these, if those bolts ever spin, you can't get them off without doing all of this that we're doing here. So again, we'll probably weld them in and then, you know, this is a big job and our customer is, you know, it's unfortunate that it happened, but unfortunately this is what happens. You know, when you get something like this, you gotta tear everything apart to get at the tiniest little thing. Well, we finally got the auger out of the auger housing so you guys can see it here. And there is still a whole bunch of nasty stuff all over the uh, auger blades on the second stage there that we'll have to peel off and make sure that there's no more paper around the outer edges because that's what was binding us up. And I believe it's this one right here. You guys can see the threads on it are starting to go. But the other two, that one and that one, they're still good. But we're going to have to press this one out, put a new bolt in, and then weld it from the inside. So we got this machine put back together now. We have everything lubricated up front. We also have some new shear bolts here. So we got two in a bag that uh, these are the proper ones. So here's the two spares that we're going to be giving him. And then we also have two new ones installed on the auger as well. The auger blades came off before we went and put everything back on so we could grease the axles. Before we joined the front and the back half of this machine, uh, we had to wait for a belt. So we ended up putting a Kevlar belt on here. So we made an order from Stens and we got a true blue half by 45. There's your Stens part number there. So this is a Kevlar belt. It'll last a lot longer than a normal belt. A little bit more expensive, but definitely worth it. And this machine is done. It's ready to go back to the customer. You know, like I said, unfortunate that there was all of that nasty bits of newspaper in there, but you know, what can you do? Because you don't really know that it's down there. You kind of just have to uh, be careful when you're snow blowing. And if something like that does happen where a chunk of newspaper gets sucked back in, you know, you want to get off of your auger handle you want to release that right away and you want to go ahead and shut the machine off pull out the spark plug cap and then you could go in there with even like a hockey stick and just try to you know get all of that nasty stuff out of there but the issue that we had was that uh, the newspaper especially the big chunks like this got caught up in the blade 
of that second stage there and just completely jammed up the whole auger. But this thing rotates freely now as it should. So it's ready to be returned back to the customer. So when we first put this thing back together, we fired it up and when we engaged the auger, we heard a little banging noise coming from the second stage in here. So what ended up happening was when that newspaper got sucked into the second stage, it actually bent one of the fins in the second stage back there. So what we did to fix that was we went in and we found where exactly it was hitting and which fin it was hitting. And we just took our torch in there and we heated it up just a little bit and using a pry bar, we just pried it in just enough because what ended up happening was when the newspaper went in, it pushed one fin this way, which pushed a fin over here the other way. Because you guys have to remember that on this machine here, the fins are attached to the big plate at the back there. So they're not separate on the shaft. It's like one big piece, but this thing is all put back together now and it was ready to go back to the customer, but the customer unfortunately doesn't want to pay his bill. So we're going to end up selling this thing to cover the costs of the repair. I'll get this thing fired up so you guys can hear it run. So you know it's kind of unfortunate that the customer decided not to pay his bill but uh, unfortunately when you're in the business that I am sometimes stuff like that happens so the bill I think came out to like 185 bucks almost almost $200 with tax and uh, yeah like I said you know we're gonna have to sell the machine now to cover those costs also a uh, interesting piece of information here we had uh, someone an eliminator contact us on uh, our Facebook page which you guys can check out at uh, www.facebook.com forward slash eliminator performance so you can follow me on there and uh, we had a fellow from uh, 700 miles away from me contact me and say that uh, he was having uh, this this issue uh, on his own machine and you know it was just kind of a coincidence that uh, this happened at the same time that that did and uh, you know I'm just getting around to finishing up the video now but uh, what ended up happening was uh, he hit something and uh, same thing it got wedged into his uh, second stage and bent the impeller so he asked me uh, for little tips on how to take everything apart and disassemble it and I showed him uh, my auger bearing video and uh, in that video basically it just shows you how to uh, remove a, an auger housing and the auger from inside of a snowblower he had the same issue so when it was running he was noticing that uh, that loud bang noise and that's the second stage impeller actually hitting the auger housing. So again he got back to me and I said uh, it's probably one of the fins that are bent and if you go through the chute where the snow comes out you should be able to bend it back down. Sometimes it requires heat sometimes it doesn't. On these older machines they're made out of a lot thicker steel so it's going to be a lot stronger and you might have to use a little bit of heat and like I said we went in with the oxyacetylene torch and just kind of hit it uh, in a couple spots to warm it up and then just push down on it using a crowbar I think and uh, just enough to push that fin down just a little bit to the point where it was level again so after you know kind of walking him through the process he ended up saying that uh, it fixed his issue you know it was exactly that and he was surprised that uh, we actually knew the exact issue that he was having uh, for not even seeing the machine basically he just told me uh, the issues that he was having and I kind of walked him through step by step on uh, how to fix it and uh, he left us a very nice review and comment on our Facebook page and I think that's pretty cool so I just want to thank him for that if my videos have helped any of you guys think about maybe leaving me a review on Facebook Book, I'd really appreciate it. It helps us out. And this will most likely be the last snowblower video of uh, this year because uh, as you guys can see in the back, we're starting to work on ATVs now. So stay tuned for uh, some videos on some ATVs shortly. Well, that's it for today's video. If you guys enjoyed it, think about leaving me a thumbs up. You know, it really helps me out. You can click here to subscribe and you can click over here to watch one of my previous videos. I upload every single week. So be sure to come on back next week. Check the channel out for what we got new. And as always guys, thanks for watching.